Inspiration can flow from many different sources and Aisha Siddharth draws on her Indian, Pakistani and Burmese heritage to fuel her passion for cooking. This is already a multicultural mix, but she's also open to culinary ideas from all over the world, ranging from Thailand to the Middle East and Mexico. Today's menu has been inspired by Aisha's diverse culture and upbringing. Aisha Siddharth can trace her ancestral roots to the village of Surat in India, from where her grandparents travelled to Myanmar before settling in Pakistan. To this diverse culinary heritage, Aisha adds her own spicy inventions. Today we get to spend time with a lady who's turned a spice business in a food market into an empire. Hi, Hi how, yeah, are how are you? Good you? Thank yourself. You. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you so much for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. The aromas smell phenomenal in The here. spices, yes. <laughs> Tell me a little bit more about what we're going to be cooking. We've got a mix of heritage going on here. I've taken a little bit from all my different heritage and cultures. It is absolutely amazing. Well, I'm definitely excited to get cooking. So shall we start? I've got some chicken fillet here, which I'm going to put into my big bowl. What we're going to do is we're going to marinate it with a little bit of ginger garlic with some vinegar. And what this does is actually starts the tenderizing process and it preps the chicken so that it's melt in the mouth, it's not tough and it's not hard. And then what I've got here is a mustard oil and we've got some red chilli powder that's here. We don't add any colours or MSG when it comes to our spices to give it that sort of colour. So we whip this a bit and then I'm going to add in a cup of yoghurt. Here I've got some dried fenugreek leaves and then I'm going to add in about two spoons of the tandoori spice. This now goes into your chicken quite nicely. What we're also going to do is to add salt in this. I like to use the Himalayan pink salt. It's got a lot of benefits and a lot of minerals in it as well. So now that this is done, we're going to keep this aside and move on to the next element of the starter. The second element that we're going to do today is lamb shish kebabs. The binding factor here is the fat that's found in the mince. So you want to get chuck meat. The ratio should always be one kilo of mince, 200 gram of clean fat, that's there. With the onions, make sure that there's no moisture in there. Make sure that there's no water in there because if there is, then what's going to happen is we're going to have these kebabs that are going to be falling apart and they're going to be breaking. We're going to add fresh ginger garlic. We've got some fresh green chilies. Gonna add fresh mint and fresh coriander. And then we're gonna go in with the sea kebab spice and I'm gonna add in two heaped tablespoon of the spice. Also, a little bit of salt going in here and give it a good mix. And you wanna make sure that you use the kneading movement so that all your ingredients are well incorporated into your mix. And now that this is done, we're gonna move on to our third element. The third element is the malai boti. We've got some chicken fillet here and then we're going to marinate this quickly. I've got a little bit of double cream yogurt as well. I've got some almond powder and this gives a very malai kind of flavour. Crushed white and black pepper. I've got some fresh green chilies, not a lot. Fresh ginger garlic. Also some dried fenugreek leaves, that's kasuri methi. And I've got about a quarter of a cup of fresh cream here. A little bit of salt going in here. We give this a good mix. And that's all three elements done. This is really nice to do it the night before as well. You can do it, you can marinate the options and put it in the fridge. Next morning, all you got to do is holiday season, put your braai on, serve it with a nice salad, pita bread, and you're done for the day. But we're going to do ours on the pan. We've got our pan that's nice and hot and I've got some ghee here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add the chicken pieces. Make sure that the pan is nice and hot and that way we sear the chicken as opposed to losing all the moisture when it releases a whole lot of water. We've added a little bit of ghee and if you're doing this on the braai as well, you want to kind of make sure that you kind of keep on brushing every now and again with the ghee so that it doesn't dry out too quickly. We've got a bit of charcoal going on here. It's a bit of a cheat trick and that gives the exact same flavour and taste as if we had cooked this on a bride. We've got a beautiful rich golden colour on these. We're going to lower the heat on this and let me just take that and keep this aside and keep it warm. So I'm going to use the same pan to cook my tandoori chicken. And so it's almost exactly the same process. Hot pan, then goes the fillet. We don't want to lose the moisture. Also goes quite fast. And a 
the same time, I'm just going to make sure I get all this marinade in. What we're going to do again, kind of just drops of ghee here. We've used ghee in this particular dish because it's a lot healthier. And once again, once they've got that colour that you're looking for, then you can lower the heat. It's chicken fillet. It goes really, really good. We're just going to make sure all of that goes in. We're going to keep this warm and we're going to move on to our kebabs. I've got a traditional skewer here that is used for the lamb shish kebab. And what I'm going to do, just use my fingers to sort of help me guide along. And if you kind of struggle for a bit, dip your fingers in a little bowl of water and just make sure, kind of seal them in and close them off nicely. And we just slide them off the skewers. So we're gently just going to layer them onto our pan. And once again, we're cooking these on quite high heat. Don't overcrowd the pan and we're going to leave them till they've got a bit of colour. And then we're going to start turning them around. I'm just going to brush it with a little bit of ghee again. We can turn these now. They've got a bit of colour. You want to make sure that it's nice and even on both sides. We're going to empty this into a little platter. It smells absolutely amazing. I'm going to make sure that I get all these flavours from here and then we're going to smoke this quickly. I've got this charcoal that's hot. We're going to take this charcoal and place it into this little bowl here. Right, Shafia, that's perfect there. I've got two sheets of butter paper that's ready here. So I'm going to just place a little dollop of ghee and immediately it starts smoking. We close it and make sure that we just close that. So that gives it our lovely, smoky, dry kind of feel without putting it on the fry. We're going to get started with the coconut infused rice. All right, let's get started. I've got some rice here. This has been washed and soaked. And this is basmati rice. Then goes in the baby onions, the shallots, the cumin, cinnamon, lemongrass stalk. And goes in the water. And here I've got coconut milk. A little bit of coconut cream goes in quite nicely. We give it a stir and then we add in about a teaspoon of salt. Give it a good mix and pop the lid on. Put the machine on. While that gets done, we move on with our curry. We're going to get started with our chicken curry. I'm going to put the stove on. I've got chicken with pieces here, with bones in here. And I'm going to start marinating it with a little bit of turmeric. A little bit of fresh garlic goes in here. We're going to give this a bit of a mix. Make sure the turmeric is nice and mixed in with the garlic in the chicken. I've got some coconut oil that goes into a heated pan. I've got onions. I've steamed them and I've put them through the machine so they're almost in an onion paste. And that way you don't feel and taste the onion. We're going to cook these onions out a bit till they're nice and pink in colour and goes the garlic and the ginger. I'm going to go in with the chilli powder. We mix that in and in goes the marinated chicken. We're going to braise this chicken till it's nice and golden in colour and once the chicken is golden then we move on to the tomatoes. Add in about half of a glass of water. We add a little bit of salt in to taste and let's pop that lid back on and let this chicken cook. As a single mom, how important is dinner time in the house for you? That's one time of the day that I absolutely make sure that I am at home as they walk in through the doors. We sit together as a family and discuss what the day was all about. All right, so let's have a look at this chicken. And we can see the oil's risen to the top. We're going to add our tomatoes in. The tomatoes are nice and pureed. I'm going to give it a mix. And kind of leave this on medium to high heat till the tomatoes are cooked out as well. We are now ready to add our coriander into this pot and give it a good mix. Oh, Kriya, I can't wait. Let's dish this out. <laughs> Let me help you. Thank you. I don't know about you, but the drumstick and the thigh is my absolute favourite. Smells absolutely amazing. I'm going to garnish this with some fresh coriander. Well, I'm definitely keen to give it a try, but we do have one more dish to make. The dessert, that's it. Let's get started with that. Growing up, we used to love this because it has so many different elements and absolute favourite during the fasting month because it's got jelly and it's got fruits and cardamoms and pistachios and all of that. So absolute, absolute favourite of mine's growing up and now my boys. And it's quick and easy to make. Absolutely. Let's put the stove back on and we're going to pour the smoke in here. And as it comes to a gentle boil, we're going to add sugar and goes some crushed pistachio. And goes some crushed almonds. We're gonna pop in 
some saffron and crushed cardamom powder. Okay, we're gonna wait for this to come to a boil. We're gonna let this simmer and reduce in half. When we left with half of the quantity that we started off with, we're gonna put it away in the fridge and let it cool overnight. And then you should be left with something like this. That's a thickened milk mixture. Can you see the malai that's on top here? That's the absolute best. Okay, can you please pass me a glass there? We're gonna do a spoonful of the yellow jelly. I'm gonna add a little bit of this reduced milk and it's all about layering. Red jelly. And this is just the fine thin vermicelli. Let's do a little bit of the milk again. Fruit. We are going to go in with a little bit of whipped cream. And then we're gonna sprinkle some almonds. Cardamom is one of my absolute favorite spices. And just like that, we're done. That's our wonderful dessert ready. I'm sure you can't wait to get to the table. I know I can't. The boys are gonna be home soon. Let's get to the table. Okay. This looks delicious. Kriya, there you go. That's how we do it in my house. I definitely wanna give one of these a try. Absolutely. Does it pass the test? Tastes like it came out of a sauce bottle, and but it, it hasn't. Has it. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. All you need is the right spices, the right mix, and you can make authentic street food. And lots of love and passion. I think I hear the boys. Boys? Yay! Hey. Hello. Hello. That's the first A from Kriya. I think I'm the second. He's the third. And that's the R. I think we're all very hungry. Let's sit down to eat. I definitely want to try the dessert. Oh, sure <laughs> do as much as Mama then as Dawn's do. Let's give it a go. I can definitely see why this is oh. your boy's favorite. <laughs> <laughs> it's like everything good all into one glass there. 